2022 hasn't been the strongest year for cryptocurrencies. Over the past year, the digital currency has lost 62.84% of its value. And now, more bad news. B uh, Binance Coin, rather, has been hacked, and the digital bandits made off with 2 million Bitcoin tokens. That's about $568 million. It is the latest in a series of security incidents targeted at a digital assets. According to Changian Zhao, the billionaire co-founder of Binance, the crypto heist took place on a bridge between blockchains and has been contained. According to him, that's what he said. But then, how contained can crypto theft be if criminals have hacked about $2 billion of Bitcoin so far this year within the same spectrum? So we have um, Ola Toshi, who is uh, a player in the digital space and, of course, an analyst uh, who is joining us this morning to understand what is actually happening in the crypto world. It's a pleasure to have you, Ola. Yes, uh, very good uh, morning to you there. It's uh, good to be with you. Now, blockchain, uh, the technology which powers cryptocurrency is supposed to be the safest uh, method of transacting in the world. But then how do we now explain the fact that about $2 billion um, dollars worth of money has spoof gone into the air within the same, um, that's the echo space, that's the crypto echo space now? Yes, uh, it is a shame that we're still, we continue to see, um, you know, these hackers uh, taking advantage of uh, vulnerabilities, uh, you know, within the chains. Um, yes, I would agree. Uh, the cryptocurrency and uh, digital assets uh, transactions are still the safest type of transactions there are. However, with some of the more innovative uh, standards which have been introduced, as you mentioned earlier, uh, the cross bridge uh, transaction, which in essence is moving. Uh, you know, uh, digital assets from one blockchain uh, to another blockchain. That process requires a centralized uh, storage uh, facility, uh, which in itself uh, can be uh, can be open up uh, to vulnerabilities because uh, the funds which are being converted uh, from one chain to the other have to be stored centrally uh, for uh, that process uh, to take place. And uh, of course, whilst that's happening, you know, some obviously hackers. Uh, you know, uh, some individuals have decided to take advantage of that, and that's sort of where uh, we've seen the losses in the recent one, obviously on Binance, uh, of roughly, as we come to understand, $100 million uh, worth of coin being stolen. Um, I might add that a $7 million of that's been frozen, uh, which is some good news. Uh, but again, one of the points which we made when we saw a, you know, theft uh, like this, I think back in July, uh, was that the security protocols around you know cross bridge transactions uh, are not fully developed yet and more time is needed uh, in this space is still very much in its infancy more time is needed to you know for uh, the analysts the specialists and the security security specialists to understand more about the technology and make it more robust we also have to bear in mind that uh, a while ago uh, the preferred method of, uh, of these hackers was to attack centralized exchanges. Uh, but centralized exchanges have since learned how to make things better, how to improve security. And centralized exchanges now, such as ours, are one of the safest places where you can actually transact uh, you know, on crypto uh, currencies. But again, there's still a lot to be done in that cross bridge uh, space where we're seeing uh, these sort of attempts uh, taking place. Well, make me understand this. I want to be sure blockchain transactions are encrypted, right? Sorry, come again? I said blockchain transactions are encrypted. Yes. So but when you have um, these kind of transactions, don't they have digital footprints that can be traced so that um, it can be prevented when it comes to being hacked, when transactions take place? So can these um, prints be um, you know, traced so that it will prevent any sort of uh, breaking into the banks and stealing people's money? And can those people, that is the, the culprits now, be um, uh, apprehended, so to speak? Yeah, so you are right, uh, you know, the uh, cryptocurrency uh, transactions are encrypted. Uh, there is a need for consensus across the blockchain uh, for any transaction to actually go through. So that point should be mentioned, that is true. However, these particular transactions, which involve moving, uh, like transferring value of funds from one chain to the other, uh, there is a centralized storage process. Um, which isn't, if you like, decentralized. That centralized storage process is what's open to vulnerability, and that's what the hackers are taking advantage of. 
right? So it's like you're trying to move value from one blockchain, which on its own has all its facilities of encryption, um, of confirmation and consensus, uh, to another chain. So the process of moving requires, uh, you know, centralized storage of funds. That's what's open to vulnerability, and that's what we need to study more. More research is required, in my opinion, to try to understand how we can make that safer and how we can protect it from uh, the hackers. And there's a lot of work going on, uh, obviously, by the likes of uh, Binance, who, who suffered, uh, you know, this, the, the hacker in the early hours of this morning. Uh, let's tie this to the metaverse. Uh, when cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology first broke into the mainstream consciousness, it was relatively small and um, opportunities for thefts were limited. But now we we'll have a wider ecosystem with uh, several metaverse uh, products and technologies available. So is it possible that the metaverse has grown too quickly for it to be able to defend itself from criminal activities? Well, with regards to the metaverse itself, uh, it would really depend on the underlying uh, you know, chain, if you like, or the underlying smart contracts, which a number of different artifacts within the metaverse are uh, running on. So the dependencies on you know the underlying technology, I wouldn't say it's growing too fast. I think we're still uh, in very early days, very uh, access to the metaverse, uh, you know, which people have currently. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, I think. We are in that sort of, you know, pre-expansion or like pre-explosion phase, uh, you know, where the metaverse will eventually become, uh, you know, an everyday tool in people's lives as it solves a lot of the concurrent issues we have, uh, you know, be it in finance uh, or ownership of property and a number of other, you know, uh, you know, sort of um, uh, requirements we have in our day-to-day -day lives, which the metaverse is say solves. So it, at some point, there will be more maturity in the space, and not just maturity in terms of access, but we're actually looking at things like that with regulation, and of course, uh, you know, looking at the maturity of the technology itself. So have steps been taken by the stakeholders and the co-founders and founders of um, this um, crypto world? Have they taken any steps to ensure that the metaverse, the crypto world, is safe from um, uh, cyber theft? Yeah, so um, all of us, a lot of us, a variety of uh, communities, the different communities that exist, uh, working, um, you know, all the time on looking for ways to solve uh, the, you know, the vulnerability that we know exists. Uh, so it's an ongoing process. Yes, uh, you know, the community is getting bigger by the day. There's a lot of money, as you just mentioned, two billion loss, uh, you know, uh, on cross, uh, you know, cross chain um, bridges. But at the same time, um, you know, we can't put the uh, genie back in the bottle. Uh, we have to proceed. We have to continue uh, you know, uh, on this journey. Uh, again, a lot of uh, problems are being solved, uh, you know, monetary issues uh, across Africa right now that we see specifically. Uh, we are solving these problems. Uh, security, of course, is, a, is, a, is, a, is our number one, uh, you know, concern. Uh, but we do everything we can to ensure the safety of funds, safety of our funds, safety of our client funds. Um, we at the moment are not really involved in much, uh, you know, cross-chain uh, transfer of funds. Uh, but at the same time, uh, those who are involved in it have to find a way, and they are currently concurrently working on uh, ways to, to, you know, improve the security uh, and improve the technology. So it's an ongoing. Um, you know, it's, it's ongoing. Uh, again, the technology, a lot of it is still very young. It's still in its infancy. We're going from smaller communities to larger communities every day. Uh, and the onus really is on all of us to find a way to, you know, opt that security. Uh, and again, as I say, the process continues. It doesn't stop. We're constantly innovating, constantly looking for new ways to improve security, uh, constantly looking for new ways to protect our consumers and, of course, protect our business. Uh, so currently, Ola, what impact uh, these heists uh, have or had on um, the crypto space? Do you see the investors or the potential actors uh, continuing their investments within the metaverse space, or you see them pulling out their funds? Well, I mean, I think uh, whether it's digital asset space as it is, metaverse projects, of which there are several, um, I think we will see more investment. There are a number of reasons for that. At the moment, we're in what's called, a, if you want to call it a crypto winter or bear market, right? Uh, Bitcoin itself, we've seen it lose uh, 
you know, a 69% of its value over, you know, the last year, if you wish. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, these of this, this happened before, right? We know there are going to be cycles like there is in all markets. It's not just the, uh, you know, digital assets or crypto markets, which is suffering losses. All markets have suffered losses. Um, and we know that at the end of the bear cycle, we're likely uh, to come into the next bull cycle, right? So a lot of innovators use this period as a moment to, uh, you know, find better solutions, find better solutions to security issues, uh, find better solutions for client requirements. Uh, in my case specifically, we're always looking for uh, solutions to the variety of monetary uh, issues we suffer from, which your last, uh, your last visitor just mentioned. Um, you know, so we're constantly looking for these solutions and ways to solve the current, you know, not just the issues we see in, uh, in not just the issues we see in, um, uh, in, in sort of the monetary space from our perspective, but issues across the entire industry uh, with regards to the metaverse, with regards to blockchain, digital assets, uh, the innovation continues. And there's a lot of it going on right now. So um, as you mentioned earlier, investors, investors are actually more keen now than they've ever been to get involved in this space because they can see the, the, the multitude of solutions uh, that digital assets or uh, the digital asset economy, if you like, the multitude of solutions that we're bringing to the table to solve everyday, uh, you know, uh, monetary issues, um, amongst other things. So uh, investors are excited about this space. Uh, they're eager to get involved in what we're trying to do, uh, and they're constantly encouraging us uh, to improve on what we have. Um, you know, so it's an exciting time for the community, and of course, uh, we're glad to be a part of it. And uh, we constantly offer education uh, with regards to security on our platform, for example, 2FA, which is uh, two factor authentication. We always advise everyone to employ that. Um, you know, we have a vault service for our custody systems for all coins. Uh, you know, and we, we have, you know, fingers crossed, uh, we've not been hacked. Yes, people have attempted to hack us, but uh, our security protocols have worked perfectly. So, uh, yeah, you know, um, we are in a good place. And uh, we're certainly excited about what we, uh, you know, what we have to offer in the, uh, in the weeks, months, and years. Well, uh, Allah, even with the firewalls and the two-step um, authentication, money still gets missing from um, these digital wallets. But then it does not take away the fact that um, the handlers of these um, platforms will do as much as is needed to protect um, people's funds. But then thank you so much, Allah, for joining the conversation. Thank you very much for having me.